Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder 2, yet another tank review. And from the usual top tier tank reviews, we go a bit lower in bad rating to 7.0 into the Swedish tech tree to the Bukun 1C. I hope that this is somewhat how you pronounce it in Swedish. I don't know, my apologies. But we really have to talk about this thing and it's outstanding in its performance. This shall be highlighted in the comparison to other artillery pieces in War Thunder that we have for quite a while. Also in comparison to the new Soviet 2S-3M. And the gameplay in the background will provide proof um, for what I try to explain. Now one thing before we go into the discussion. This thing was stupidly fun and it will surprise a lot of people when they came across when they come across this thing and uh, so this review shall highlight what this thing is about and also how you can exploit its weaknesses because while this thing is broken and overpowered in certain aspects it's really down to the player putting it there if you just go into the open field and just expect wonders it won't really happen, but for a player that is patient, for a player that knows the maps and just reads the map correctly and how the battle is going, you can be really successful with this thing. And without further ado, let's go right into it. So first of all, I want to have a look at the armor and we can see that as it is to be expected from an SPA, it's rather thin, only 20 for the turret or the superstructure and then 15 millimeters for the hull all around yeah there are some add-on uh, tracks but it's not really gonna save you however if we then look to the x-ray we can see that on the hull there is a big transmission that can absorb a lot of incoming shots especially APHE will prematurely detonate you save that one shot but then you are immobilized and yeah, your driver is again, especially protected by some, I'd say, internal five millimeter plating, which acts a little bit as a spalding shield. And there is also in the back of the hull, not really all that much, except exterior fuel tanks, although there are interior, whatever. And we have then four people in the um, fighting compartments. And there are, again, surprisingly high up. We have a loader, a gunner, a machine gunner, which is strange because there is no machine gun on this entire machine, and then the commander. And uh, then we have the huge, big, and not really hideable, I'd say almost external Amorek. And it's very high up. So what this means is people that don't know what this machine is they come across this for the first time they just shoot it and try to figure out how to kill it and very often they will overpen yes they might kill your um, commander yes they might knock out your gunner etc but you do not really get one shot that often at least that was not my experience and it's not really the armor it's more the space but you're also in the realms of APAG, so all the more surprising it is. I guess a lot of people just see it and pull the trigger and just randomly hit the part that doesn't outright kill it. So survivability, it's tricky, but you never should rely on it. Don't get hit in the first place. Also, don't get exposed to RT strikes because it might detonate your ammo. It didn't happen to me so far, but it's actually very likely again because this vehicle is rather big long and wide and tall you name it and also the transmission gets knocked out by basically everything that hits it and so you might survive but you also get immobilized and then this tank is a little bit in a bad spot let's move on the first comparison to other artillery pieces shall be as it is kind of tradition the mobility aspect and in that at first, the Beacon 1C has a good start with the second strongest engine with 600 horsepower, but it is also the heaviest machine with 53 tons flat. Only the Centurion Mark V AVRE comes close, and that machine is not known for being a speed demon. In fact, the horsepower to ton ratio with 11.3 is 
roughly the one of a Tiger 2 and the Centurion Mark V AVRE in fact is better than the Beacon 1C. Also the top speed is worse with only 30 kilometers per hour being kind of limited and that is yeah a really limiting factor all the more it is refreshing that in reverse you're equally fast and therefore the fastest machine in reverse which helps quite a bit in getting out of trouble but you have no neutral steering also the chassis is really long and the tracks seem to have a lot of friction so you're really bad at turning especially when you're slow when you're fast it's kind of okay but you then therefore also lose a lot of speed so this is not really a hit and run machine this is not really something for close quarters fights and you therefore should really be um, careful when picking your position you need to bring a lot of patience and you need to know your maps because the gun handling doesn't really support any sort of close quarters engagement either let's have a look the gun handling is a little bit of a mixed bag an extreme mixed bag to be honest but it starts off kind of average with a caliber of 155 millimeters for the can m60 gun but then we drop off quite steeply with only 14 rounds of ammunition um even the Sturmpanzer 2, which is a tier 1 vehicle, has more rounds than that. And so that kind of dictates that you are either very careful with your ammunition consumption, or, which I would probably more recommend, is that you try to look for a cap where you can constantly refuel, and then you can literally spam the enemy team with a reload of 3.2 seconds from an autoloader system. That has the advantage that you're independent from your crew skills and also the amount of crew. Even if you have only two left, you're fully reload capable. And so you can just empty your magazine in less than a minute. It's amazing. And that helps you to aim for multiple enemies in quick succession. Or you can also fool an enemy, just shoot the wall, he thinks you missed, it's a big gun, needs a long reload, he tries to come around the corner, but then you have the next big shell already in the chamber, and the enemy finds itself again in the hangar. So that is the amazing part. This is what the tank lives and dies by. If it wouldn't be for this hilarious reload, it would be outright bad. The rotation speed of 10 degrees per second is alright, I'd say, for such a massive gun. And what really lets you down is the gun depression of only minus 2 degrees. This lets you struggle to find good positions. Even when the terrain looks almost flat, it is pretty difficult to find a place to shoot the enemy from. But what helps is the gun elevation of 38 degrees so you can go on a slope or reverse onto a slope and then fire at the enemy or fire at the aircraft here and there then again best in class is the elevation speed of 10 degrees per second but what is then worst in class aside from the Sturmpanzer 2 is the firing arc of only 10 degrees to each side so a total firing arc of 20 degrees if you remember the transmission which gets knocked out very often by RT strikes by any sort of shot that you receive you have then the scenario that you see the enemy that shoots you it's right there in front of you and you can't do anything because of this very restricted firing angle and this really dictates that you should stay at range and shoot at range that you should try to be on a safe position in a cap and just constantly refill and then just go in and just blast the enemies which are not aware of you and then retreat in time this is the bread and butter of this tank but what are you actually shooting your enemies with the Bukan 1C fields two shell types. The first is the stock SGR M60 high explosive round, which has the best mass velocity in this comparison of 850 meters per second, which makes it a more reliable dog gun. Even hitting the first shot is not too difficult. And then it allows you to hit the really vulnerable spots of an enemy. So the penetration value is 58 millimeters 
with a TNT equivalent of 7.5 kilograms and that allows you to splash a lot of or the majority of tanks on the turret phase it splashes down and overpressures the crew you hit also the cupola and kill the enemy by overpressure and for side shots well most side plating is also not able to resist and any sort of light tank just ceases to exist to begin with and even if you kind of screw up that shot you reload so quickly very often you you reload and shoot before the enemy can properly aim at you or they even know what's going on the second shell type is a tier 3 upgrade and the zona m65 is the same shell just with a different fuse so we also have 850 meters per second mass velocity we also have seven and a half kilograms of tnt and we have 58 millimeters of penetration with the blast but this shell is per se not a proximity fuse shell that would also work versus helicopters or planes which is a little bit of a shame the ones that i hit were actually direct hits and not close misses which would activate the fuse it is an anti-personal or anti-infantry shell and so it explodes when coming close to the ground but it also doesn't work as a top-down shrapnel round versus tanks or something because when you try that it either would detonate close to the ground or cause a direct hit which destroys the tank just like the stock HE shell or when you fire over the tank and expect some top-down action it actually explodes behind the tank doing little to no damage and that makes this shell very impractical I wouldn't use it because you only have also 14 rounds of ammunition and so you basically don't have any sort of shells to spare do you and so only use the stock high explosive shell it will do just nicely further this shell will prematurely detonate when you shoot through a forest even without hitting a tree directly just the proximity to the trees will detonate it so this has been the Beacon 1C in statistics and numbers and comparison. So two aspects left in this review. First of all, how to play this machine. Second of all, what is my personal final verdict on this tank? Let's start in how to play this tank. Don't use it in an aggressive frontline position. Yes, it can work. And yes, I've provided a little bit of footage, but that was a bit more luck than judgment. To be honest, I think a lot of people at the moment are really going in aggressively, uh, which wouldn't be their normal playstyle because of the current winter event marathon. And so they want to force the cap, they want to force the kills, they want to force the assists. And so they just end up in front of my guns because I know the maps, I know the locations. And I also are very often blessed with getting out there in time. and so that just adds up so always think about how to get out of there how to refill your ammunition because it's only 14 rounds and just try to stick with your team try to stick with some spa that can help you defend versus aircraft even though i had some good shots at them quite literally overall this is a fun vehicle overall this is a cool tank as a final verdict but let's think about it if you just want to quickly derp stuff then there is the PT 76 57 then there is the ZSU 57 2 there is the WZ 305 which is a far superior um, anti everything and there are a lot of other machines that have multiple recoilless rifles autoloaders heat FS APF STS etc 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 but as the derp, as something that is just full force in the face kind of machine. Yes, it is cool. But we have seen such machines in the past very often. And uh, I believe, I'm actually pretty convinced that this machine, as long as there is no big change in the meta, like we get massively bigger maps, we get then supply areas, um, bigger circles, so to speak, there is no real value for those machines aside from the derp. It's not a machine that can withstand pressure if people drop multiple RT strikes on your location. 
if multiple enemies come from various different directions and if anything with serious armor and cladded in bushes comes around and you just don't miss the driver's hatch or the commander's cupola to splash down versus an IS-6, IS-4, you're in a bit of a tough situation because you don't have armor, you don't have maneuverability, you have no mobility and 14 rounds you can run through them very quickly. At the end, it's a great machine, it's fun, go for it, but be aware that after a while this can get frustrating, this can get boring and I think just see it as an addition to your lineup, as an extension when the battle is already decided or when you just want to go with your teammates, your squad mates into a direction and just want to deliver the derp. A serious player looks different to me, but that is just artillery in War Thunder per se. And let's be, let's be clear about this. Without this amazing reload, this machine would be considered outright bad. And that has been it for me. I hope you liked the presentation because this is now the end of the video. If so, why not give it a like? For you it's just a click, for me it means the world. If you want to further support me, why not subscribe and uh, hit the bell to see more. And as usual, we will see each other on the ways in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.